Is it on? <laughs> yeah, just look Oh, at you it. told me yeah. to wait. Yeah, I know, but you're I wanted to look, wait for your like genuine reaction cuz oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just look like an idiot. Well, you told me to wait. Well, no, you're like, wow. That's rude. You just look like a dummy. <laughs> Well, I mean, like, you're just sitting there, like, hey, you just, know like, what I'm thinking the of right cheekiest now? grin Because today at the face. gym, I was, I've been listening to uh, Pup for, like, three Sorry, weeks who, now. Who? Pup the band. Okay. P-U-P. Yeah. They're from Toronto. Dots they in won between? P-U-P, is it, is yeah. It, is, Pure unused potential is what... Because when the okay. lead singer went to go tell his grandma he's dropping out of university to be in a pop punk band, uh, his grandma said, yeah, pure unused potential. And so and he's, he's like, that's it! He's like, thanks, grandma. They used to be called Topanga, but then... The girl, like, like Boy Meets World. Yeah, but Girl Meets World was rebooting, and they're like, "Oh shit, we can't afford that trademark now." <laughs> so they're like, "Bye, it's like, peace, thanks, thanks, Grandma." But anyways, I was listening to them, but I'm like, I want to change up, I want to switch up. And Selena Gomez, this new song came out last night, "Love You to Love Me" or "Lose You to Love Me" or something like that. I listened to it straight up, hour fifteen straight, repeat. It's a three minute song. Never. Yeah. I don't know how you. Did that. Nope. What happened? Nope. 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 What happened to you? What do you mean? You used to listen to good music. I do instead. I just want to change it up today. I listen to great music all the time. Sure. Okay. <laughs> don't look at my don't look at my algorithm. It is shit housed. It's oh broken. man, my YouTube algorithm is all over the place. It's just it, it's so confused. I it's went confused in, on its own. It doesn't know what to recommend me at this what point. What was the one video that like you were like this is gonna ruin it? You know what mine was? I clicked on one uh like the real facts behind Justin Trudeau. Pfft, done. Done. One po- political video a month ago, ruined. My algorithm is broken. All it is is like, oh, so you want to know about the secrets of Canada's politics? And I'm like, no. No, I clicked it once. I just, I don't, I didn't even mean to click it. Honestly, I didn't. down the hole. Yeah. Six. You know what the worst part is? Is sometimes, like, I'll be watching YouTube before I go to sleep. So I'll be watching, like, a TED Talk or something like that. Yeah, just I well no, it's it's no, no, nice. they're like, hey, yeah. Greg watches TED Talks, you listen to Selena Gomez. What is going on? But, <laughs> no, okay. We change the reason what reason, happened. Reason being is like when I, I kinda can turn my screen like so I kinda tilt my screen down and so put it you on. You don't see it, you hear it. Exactly. Do you I, not play video games it. anymore? When you're falling bit. asleep, you can't can you play video games in your sleep? <laughs> no, but you can play them till you fall asleep. I've well, done that. What I can't <laughs> I'm sitting in a chair. Are you playing online? Your kill death must suck. So, what is it? One kill, thirty-eight murders. Probably. So yeah, when I fall asleep, thirty-eight deaths. But sometimes, murder? like, I'll wake up and like my history is just absolutely like just destroy. I like because I don't know what. Like, so then I get recommended game, these. You wake up, you're like, oh, what did I not watch? Alex last Jones, night? the Frost yeah. Grey. And you're like, whoa, 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 guys, guys. <laughs> I started as a TED talk. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've uh, I've woken up to some weird videos, and like videos sometimes are like five, six years old. I'm like, my what? It, like I wake up and it's talking about like, I can't believe Trump would run for president. This is very odd. I don't think he'll even come out of the Republican side. Oh, how what? wrong we were. Who's was 2014. What the <laughs> fuck? And now the same arguments are for Democratic. Yeah, exactly. Like, Who are picking guys? <laughs> okay, right. okay. We are a hockey podcast. Welcome back. Last Minute Podcast, episode 203. Thank you to everybody who came back to listen to us on the last one. The comments were uh, off the, the chain. We did have comments, but I want to get to them yeah, later. Yeah, 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 for sure. Later in the show. Um, you know, surprise, surprise, we have another episode and Cam randomly comments again. Yeah, I, dude, guys, I lost <laughs> it. I lost it when Luke commented. Totally. Oh my God, as if, as if. Yeah, hey guys, Cam here. Commented, yeah. coming I in. find it so weird that we didn't do a podcast for like what, a year and a half. And yeah, he just It was, like it's not, it's not, not me. Weird. It's weird. not me. Oh my God. Okay. Sure. You, like, you we wait. sent us pictures. You it's in our email. The second one, it's not, least. would I just find a random Halifax Moosehead in Philadelphia Flyers fan? Yes, you yes. would. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> it's not me. You have done much more weird things on the internet than that. Luke, Wait, are I you can't... randomly now into Selena Gomez's new song? Her video came along, out yesterday. Along with not liking certain types of protein powder. Along with listening to Pup. And also they won the... into CrossFit right now. Yeah, they are very into CrossFit. They won the Polaris Prize this year, Pup. Is Canada's that... like musical, like a distinction award. They've They That's won it. cool, actually. Do you know who else have won, actually? No. no. You're never going to be able to name pretty much anyone else. But a couple years ago, uh, a hardcore band named Fucked Up won it as well. 
So I don't know how high the bar is to win it. I feel like if we started it and just called ourselves like last man in rockin', we could in under two years we could win this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's who's our singer though? You, obviously. Oh god no. Dan, you have to play guitar and bass. Can do. Clearly I'm on drums. (laughs) But if drums are anything like rock rock band drums, I'm out. (laughs) Rock band drums, I've never gotten zero. I feel like real drums are probably easier. Yeah, rock band drums are like make me question why I'm uh, why I'm alive. <laughs> yeah, God, I hate. If there's I ever hate. a game that want to make you feel like shit about your musical talent, it's, <laughs> you can play Welcome to the Jungle so in real life. You can't do it on expert. <laughs> yeah, it's a hundred percent rock band. Okay, okay. Story of my life. Now it's the start of the year. There's nothing crazy controversial that's really happened. There's nothing outlandish. Yes, there's some. Teams that are outperforming right now in the NHL, or some teams that are playing above or below their potential. But overall, there's nothing that exciting going on in the NHL. Been kind of boring. Honestly, um, this has it's been very quiet. It has been. So, what is there to talk about? Well, there's a certain team's defensive core that, if you compare it to their defensive core two years ago, it's quite trash now. And we got to talk today, about. Though. We gotta talk about the de-evolution of the Winnipeg Jets decor. By the oh, way, I, hey. by the way, I did roll my eyes when I said I got better today. <laughs> uh, we'll get See, to that. De-evolution. Yeah. Would so you say it's a degeneration X. Yeah. Do you have two words for me? I don't. Suck it. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, dude. <laughs> Is it a de-evolution because it's the defense? Uh, that Greg did that on purpose, and he wanted us to pick up on it. No, I didn't. That's I think a Greg so. move. Get him. Look so. at that smile. No, on face. I think so. <laughs> uh. Heritage Classics this weekend. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah. So, uh, then there's the Devils, who I think we picked on this show to be pretty good. They have not been pretty good. Really? And uh, okay. there's reasoning behind that. And it's going to lead us Quite into the, the rookies of this year as well. And then lastly, I want to talk just of the big stories. Power plays across the NHL because uh, there's a certain power play right now that's dominating. There's actually two of them. But one of them we all know. And we hate... Two thirds of this power play for sure. Okay, then it's Ketchup Cam, our new favorite segment, along with Hot Takes for Hot Cakes, which we have the warmest of syrup that has not been chilled in the fridge. And not lukewarm? There's some Not lukewarm. Mm. So, All right. there's but some hot hold takes. On. If it's the <clears throat> hottest of yeah. syrup, I don't want to get into it right now, but if it's the hottest of syrup, technically it like crystallizes in sugars and gets hard. But it's very good. Oh, so. yeah. Uh,. Then obviously our Lafreddy watch, and then finish off with comments from yeah. the last show. So, Winnipeg Jets decor. I two years ago, if you told me the decor that showed up with Tobias Enstrom, Dustin Bufflin, Tyler Myers, uh, Josh Morrissey, Jacob Truba, and Ben, Ch- ben, ben Chirot would devolve into this. Did you this, say Dustin Bufflin? I did. Yeah. Okay. Would devolve into a top pairing of what? Josh Morrissey and Neil Pionk? Mm, it, honestly, their D pairs have changed every game. Okay, like, name, name their D. Kulikov's been up there. Okay. So right now it's Niku. No. Sammy Niku. No, 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 no. no. Oh, okay. fuck. Okay. Here we go. Here we're going to. I'm going to write it down for you. Okay. You got Josh Morrissey, Neil Pionk, who actually has been quite good. good. Um, Kulikov. They claimed Carl Dahlstrom off waivers from Chicago. He's played like 50 games. He's been okay. He's okay. okay. Uh, Tucker Pullman. Uh, and Anthony Boteto, who's played a ton of games. Why? Don't know. From Nashville? Coach likes him. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Uh, what about that other kid, the young guy? Uh, Sammy Niku, he, he got hurt in training camp. He only played a couple games, and then he got healthy, and they sent him down to the AHL. No, the little... Which everyone thought was for like a conditioning stint, but he's still down there. No, that little guy. Uh, hey, Nola. Hey, Nola, yeah. Is he still here? He's still here, but he's at, he'll be at his nine games if he plays on Saturday. Ooh. And then that's uh, it, right? Yeah, well, Nathan Bull, he, was, he hasn't played a game yet. He got hurt in the preseason. He should be back <laughs> in the next week. Yeah, so he's hurt, too. You've just named nine. We're at nine. D. And then they just signed Lucas Spiesler They today. just picked up Spiesler. Signed or? Picked him up off waivers. Off waivers. From sorry. where? He had, they they were kind of nasty. He signed a deal with Anaheim for, like, I think 750 k But they put him on waivers. Jets are like, sure. <laughs> They need help wherever they can get it. You know what? They honestly, legitimately have... He's not a bad pickup, honestly, because he'll bring, like... So, watching their games right now, this is maybe a d- different part of the debate. I actually think their defense isn't their biggest problem right now. They're not allowing a shit ton of goals. 
they aren't no. scoring at all. That's their problem right now. Um, but their defense is very small, and they get pushed around a lot, uh, which is the complete flip side to last year. I mean, they had Myers, Bufflin, Sherratt, Truba. Those are all big boys. They're all gone. So um, I think Spees is a good – he's he's more on the physical side. He's played 500-some-odd games, so he's – He's an improvement. I don't know how much of an improvement he is, but... You can always trust a Swiss defenseman. I don't hate the move. Let's Mark that Strike. Way. That's a pretty decent Considering pickup. he's making like 750k. He's going to step in and bad. immediately be at least a veteran presence for the young guys. He'll be better than what they have right now. Mm-hmm. What number does he wear? Five? But honestly, their defense hasn't been terrible. No, and I'm not saying that their defense has been terrible. But on paper, it looks but it's just god awful. A, it's the fact that... <laughs> it's the fact that... They allowed it to get to this point. I understand the whole Dustin Buffum leave yeah. doesn't help by any means. But this is a team that had, I remember talking about it on this podcast, where we said they might have the best decor in the league. I definitely said that out of my mouth. It's, like, at least top five for it's quite sure. The, quite the change. And now it's like, you got a pile of just randoms. Yeah. There's a pile of question marks in there. Like, I'm just... So what I'm doing things, right now is I'm just trying yeah. to pull up all their hockey DBs so we can get a total games played of all the players. And to be honest, it's with not you, very good. And to be honest with you, their quote unquote best defenseman, Josh Morrissey, has looked pretty goddamn awful. This is he year. hurt? No, he just is. He looks terrible. Like I'm, I, I, I'm not saying he's bad, but he does not look good. But it's that first. It's the wait, wait, hold on. Does this contract kick in next year? Next year. Ah, never mind. But he does have an A now. They gave yeah. him an A. Um... Maybe pressure. I, I mean, he was hurt too, so is he 100%? He's just making a lot of uncharacteristic mistakes, and he's... Is it trying to do too much because, maybe. you know, there's yeah. nothing else there? Maybe, okay. but... Uh... So we'll just... I'm going to frame it as this is the top six that Winnipeg has right now. Josh Morrissey, Carl Dahlstrom, Anti, uh, Anthony Bedetto, uh Tucker Pullman, Dmitry Kulikov, and Neil Pionk. Okay? Josh Morrissey is 232 career games. Do you want me to add these up? No. Okay. Uh, 83 points in those 232 games. Carl Dahlstrom, 57 games played, 9 points. Anthony Bedetto has been a journeyman. 141 NHL games, 20 points. Tucker Pullman, 34 games, 3 points. Dmitry Kulikov, 636 games, 130, uh, 163 points. Neil Pionk, 112 games, 47 points. They have one player over 500 games. They have one or that two they, players. That they just o- picked up. Exact two players over two hundred games played. How many games you, Kula- has Kulikov played? Six hundred thirty-six. So they have two guys over five hundred now with Spisa. Oh, sorry, I wasn't including no, Spisa. No, okay, yeah, but no, yeah, yeah. Realistically, but you lose all that veteran presence on your decor now. That's got to mean something for a team that lacks identity in general. Which is what the Jets do. Defensively, absolutely. That's like under 2,000 games for your entire decor. That's like, that's, that's, some... al- that's not even... A th- they're almost not even at 1,000 games. I almost do... If you do not include Lucas Pisa, I if I added these numbers up, I don't think they're close to 1,000. I like I think they're just right around 1,000. No, I... I... There was a stat. Um, they played Pittsburgh third or fourth game. Of I was the just season, gonna say, Chris Letang has like Chris 2, Letang games. had had more games played than the entire Jets decor that night. <laughs> Granted, Josh Morrissey wasn't playing, and neither yeah. and, and neither was Kulikov. But still, they both missed that game. One, you could have two but, guys on one team, like D, and just so, Suter well, and Spurgeon. For all the inexperience, it's not their biggest issue. No, and, they've and, scored. 1,212 games on that top without six. Without including. Without speed. On a five-game five stand, closer they to seven. scored four, seven goals in five games. But here's the thing. If you're looking at scoring, like, if you look at the metrics, you look at PDO, which is kind of the luck factor, but it's save percentage along with shooting percentage. Mm-hmm. The Jets have a very low shooting percentage right now. And what we've seen in the past and obviously there are anomalies as we saw in 2015 with the Colorado Avalanche as we saw last year with the New York Islanders where you can sustain an abnormally high PDO for an entire season it's just very rare where you see a sustainable low abnormally low PDO so when it comes to the Jets they're a team that right now has a very middle of the pack PDO but that shooting percentage is going to rise it's going to come up from what it's at right now because realistically 
you're just not going to be that bad shooting percentage wise for the rest of the season. Like you looked at Kyle Connor, who I believe was one of the top shot producers at five on five, had no five on five goals until last night. I believe. Mm-hmm. Well, he, so, I think he only had two goals up until the last two it, games. So, and think. and what it comes down to is. It's the early, be- it's the beginning of the season, and we're not seeing the regression to the mean yet, which we're going to get to with some other teams. But they're just not. Um, right now, the push is not going in for them, which is a, and they're still right around five hundred. It's not like it's killing their season. They're not in last place. No, I mean they're, they're still there. All things considered, with the with the roster, at least defensively, they have. I mean, to be where they are is pretty good. Exactly. The the more concerning thing is they haven't exactly played the steepest of teams. Having said that, they did shut out Edmonton, who nobody could stop. So um, I believe it's uh, the Edmonton McJesus's and friends. My favorite yes. friend is friend seventy seven. I think like Greg, I think like Greg said though, it will even out. They will start to score more. They have too much talent not to score more than they are. Mm-hmm. Um, their goaltending Connor Hellebuck has been really good. Like, really good. I can pull up his stats, but they're really good. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's you know, I went to the game last night. The more concerning thing is just, particularly Mark Shifley and Blake Wheeler, they look off. Those two guys don't look good. And for the last two years, they've been one of the highest scoring pairs in the NHL. You know what you could do? Um, but they, they, they look, well, they did last night for oh, a bit. I, I'm, um, I, I showed Dan a splitting motion, so yeah. split them apart. Um, they did, but they, those two guys just look, they look off. Um, you know what? I can I, I offer a solution real quick. Stick yeah. with me here, real quick. Okay. I know what you're no. gonna say. He signed a contract. No, no, no. Did no, he really? No. no. Wait, wait. No. Okay. I'll no. Okay. Wait. It's saving fine. it for catch up, Cam. Fine. Fine. I won't include him. I won't include him. I offer Nolan Patrick. Hmm. No. Pretty good. Nope. Stick with me. Shane Goss to spare. Ooh. Ooh. And a first Are you rounder. Saying, ooh, because it's very it's, good. It's, it's, oh, I thought maybe because it's like spooky. Time. He can score mm. because it's October. It's spooky. It's spooky. It's like, Nolan Patrick, a Shane Gospair, and a first rounder for Jack Rosovic and Josh Morrissey. That's all I want. There you go. What do you think? So I will sorry, throw sorry. in a sign. Sorry, why are we puck? getting rid of the only defense? No, 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 no. No, you're getting the D who can score. No, 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 no. He does best of both worlds. No, 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 no. Here's my thought. I will take that trade because you're giving me a guaranteed non-playoff team pick, so it's a lottery pick. You're also How dare you? You're also <laughs> How dare you? You're also giving me a player that is slightly worse than Josh Morris. Like I would say, Shane Goss is fair. He's slightly got more worse. offensive potential, but I don't know overall defense. And then I'll defense. take Nolan Patrick for Jack Rosovic. Because I know Nolan Patrick wouldn't mind playing in the city he grew up in. I got a sweet in the pot. I had to sweet the pot to that. get shakes. Because what I want, this is this is my dream. I want Provorov and Morrissey. Why do I want Actually, that? I don't think he wants to play here, but Provorov and Morrissey together. You know why? They're both left-handed. No, I don't care. You get you get shakes. Can't you get the Trans Siberian Snipe Show. Even better. PM all night long, baby. All night long. Provorov. P M Morrissey. P M all night long. All night. Okay. That's all I want. That's all I want in this world. Okay. Can we uh, <laughs> move on? Briefly sure. talk about Patrick Laine though, because he looked. Why? What's wrong with him? He looked like a man possessed for the first ten or well, they played. Oh God! Games. Is he about to go on a three-month slump again? I don't. Uh, he just he looked. Damn it! I wish we did this last year. So everyone, God. So everyone always <laughs> said they never question his his talent. They question his his work ethic. Okay. He's showing this year that if he. If he's in the right mental state, he could be one of the most dangerous players in the league. Yeah, I'm he had ten points in the first that. five games, and that wasn't just because he was playing with good players. Like he's been the best player on the whole team, and you can tell he's skating, he's hustling his ass off, he's back checking, he's throwing hits, he's and he's finding and you know what he's in the right spot and the puck's finding him. So, um, all I'm saying is just people were concerned he missed training camp. Would he be? Ready? But, he's he's more than ready. And it's not like he's sitting on his ass. He's still training well, in course. Switzerland or But whatever. I mean, you I know, like you're you're sorry. you're not with the team. You're not playing. He didn't play any preseason games, right? So have preseason but, um, season. You don't need it. All I'm saying is, if this is the Patrick Line that we're gonna get, it's very good. To yeah, uh, I think the biggest thing was he needs to become. And they said this jokingly 
and I'll bring it back to Jonathan Chicho. You know, Ovechkin. Yeah. Oh. Ovechkin. I remember Mike Milbury saying he needs to become a student of the game. And I make fun of myself for saying that about Patrick Laine, but it's. I, I think learning a little bit more about how to play and then produce offense and transition from your own end, especially in the NHL, um, because teams aren't going to give him the room in the NHL like that he was going to get if he played over in Europe, uh, especially when he was growing up. So I think that he's still got to deal with that transition game, something that Ovechkin's very good at. Um, and I think that's where we're going to see a big transition, no pun intended, for Liney in points and in goals and really see him reach his full potential is if he really learns how to play that transition game. Like a well round, round out his game. Yeah. Not well, really. Like, he doesn't need to be a stu- like a great defensive forward. He needs to... Ha- when he gets in the defensive zone, he needs to have purpose to get that puck out and transition it into an offensive opportunity. He doesn't need to be the defensive forward that Blake Wheeler and Mark Scheifele are. Their job is to get him the puck so that he can transition and create a scoring chance out of it. That is what he needs to do. He And I think if I'm Paul Maurice, which I'm not, because uh, I haven't won 700 NHL games. But you also have something in common. Well, God damn it, he's won a cup. Never mind. Keep going. No, yeah. You know what? He was assistant. He's never, he's never won a cup as head coach. No. But assistant. Maybe. So he still is. With I was going to say, you, you, you both who? don't have rings. Yeah. Wasn't it in Carolina? No, he wasn't no. in Carolina. He got he fired. Then you both don't have cups. Yes. Yeah, but I like your guys. So. He's, um, he's good regardless coach. of that, yeah. I, would, I would focus on pushing his transaction, transition play a little bit more forward. What? As in carrying the puck? Like Not necessarily carrying the puck, but that first pass out of the zone, I'd want him to basically not quarterback the, the breakout, but be one of the main pieces in getting that puck out every time, so then you can transition. So with. he's getting the puck to set up the play out of the offensive well, zone. Yeah. And, okay, and then, it'll, just create, and then it'll create more offense. The thing that's been the most impressive with him, though, is not his play with the puck, it's his play without the puck this year. Because that was the part last year when he didn't when he didn't have the puck, he looked lost and he was invisible. And that's a little bit more what I'm talking about. And like, this like year, him you notice bit. him. He's hitting, he's on the puck, he's back-checking, he's breaking up plays, he's starting plays. I mean, he's only got three goals in 11 games. But, but that's fine. But he, he looks like an all-around player this year, which you couldn't say in the last three years. The Jets also haven't had a very good schedule to start the year. They've played a lot of back-to-backs. They've... It's true. They played. Traveling. They played eleven games in twenty days, which I think is the most out of all the teams. I think. I think them. And, I think them and Toronto have the most games. Yeah. Toronto might be at ten or eleven, but Toronto's already at three back to backs, and they're going to be playing their fourth this week. Um, and that's my segue. Toronto. Uh, no, that's my, my, my Toronto Leafs. mention of the year. Let's no, talk uh, about those Leafs. No, we won't. Um, Heritage Classics this weekend. Calgary, Winnipeg, nine o'clock. You know That's going to be a chilly night. You know why 9 o'clock? Because the sun melted the ice last <laughs> time they did it here. Mm, okay, that too. Why? Well, Toronto and Montreal play at 6. Exactly. And they're not getting bumped. I was also Big at boys the, don't get bumped. Yeah, but I was also at the game last time it was here, and it started three hours late. That well, yeah. glare looked and then they, brutal, too. So, yeah. And it's then, funny, and then though. They lost, uh, then they ran out of beer. They, yeah, it's true. They did. They always say, hey, like, Winnipeg, too cold to play an outdoor game. Yeah, well, it's the only one that's ever been delayed because it was too sunny. Yeah. Suck it, everyone else. So. Yeah. No... I think it's I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, they're they're whatever games. I think the jerseys are gonna be the highlight. Oh, beautiful! They're they, both, I haven't they're seen both the flames ones. They are nice. Yeah, they're uh, they're like an old. Yeah, like they're white. they're like that. They're like that red, uh, orangish yellow kind of. Thing. Oh, I'm out. They're okay. I didn't like those they're from okay. a couple years ago. Are no, but the Jets brown? ones are. The Jets ones are so nice. Oh, so Especially nice. when you combine them with the red pants and the gloves and the yeah. And then you know what? You know what you do to just round the whole ensemble out together? Bring Brian Little back? No. Oh. No, you put a little inaugural season patch on it. <laughs> That's what you do to round out the... It's a foul. I can't it's a bit of a foul. Yeah. There's some people I swear that just don't understand. You should not be sports fans. I can't believe it. Like they should just put sports on the back of their jersey because they don't know what to cheer for. You know what I've seen? I've seen one. Uh, I was at preseason game when the Jets played Edmonton. I saw it. Uh, tw- uh, twenty on the left arm, sixteen on the right arm, twenty-five on the number, and said HBD or uh, yeah HBD. Happy birthday is what the acronym was Ooh. for. Really? That's rough. You're gonna drop minimum. Two hundred dollars. You couldn't just shoot your friend a text saying, "Hey, who's your favorite player? Let's speed run this." Nah, I got it. Twenty sixteen, twenty five on the jersey. Happy birthday. 
That's the Calgary Flames jersey. Oh, those are sweet. Yeah. Greg's showing me right now, so if you're wondering. Yeah, those I'll put great. them I'll put them up on the uh somewhere during the podcast so you can see them. They're not the horrendous like they're That's not, the one I was thinking of, the yellow... They're not this monster. Yeah, those beasts yeah. is a junk Don't worry, here. once again, I will put those up uh, at this point in the podcast uh, so you guys can see them as well. Because you know what? They are quite nice. Yeah. And uh, I'm not against the NHL going a little bit retro sometimes, as I, I think all sports Well, you're starting do. to see more and more of it. Well, exactly. Buffalo's gone a bit retro, LA's oh, gone a bit retro. Buff- hold on. St. Louis. Okay, Buffalo released those white jerseys, like the gold ones. Yeah. But before they announced, before they announced those ones, they announced that they're going back to the old retro jerseys a week before. Why would you even do that? No one's gonna buy those shitty white gold ones. Like they're nice, but why would you waste your money on the white gold ones? It's Buffalo. They you, don't do many things I, well. I know, but when you go back a year, like, like wait a year, and you get the retro ones back. By the way, you know what they should bring back? Buffalo specifically, alternate, the black, no. red, gray oh, buffalo. Yes. Like the, yes. the huffing. Dude, Danny Briere, you remember that? I picked those like whenever I made uh, NHL teams, like make your own team, pick your own jersey. I always went with those jerseys. They're sick. They're dope. You know and no, buffalo I will ones? never go back to the buffalo. You know those which suck. buffalo ones were nice though? Like circa like 2006 ish when no. they were good and they had no. like the blue with like the no swords. the yellow Dude, thing oh nice. the swords I thought you meant the yellow buffa slug oh god, god. trash that was awful gosh that, one, one of the worst jerseys not as it's bad not as the Edmonton Oilers alternate this year have you seen this oh god have you seen the Edmonton Oilers alternate I maybe oh I've seen some bad bad alternate jerseys but just... no it's like it's like if you went to like a um Okay, you know what? I take like, it back. These were not that nice. I thought they were nicer. Those were not nice. That's the Buffa Slug. Yeah, yeah. Those, yeah. Were not yeah. Nice. those are trash. I thought they were of nicer. Of course, they're bad. Uh, they're like if you went to a counterfeit site. Like, that's what they look like. Didn't they? they did, Edmonton had the best set did, of three Didn't jerseys. Edmonton have like a fake jersey like that like in like the 90s? Yeah. I remember having one so, as a kid. Quick question, Cameron. If you're the Edmonton Oilers and you're thinking to yourself, well, we just had one of the worst seasons ever last year. We yeah. still can't do it. We need to get more fan engagement, okay? Nobody's really buying our horrendous orange jersey with the blue shoulder pads. I like the orange. So what... You know what? It's growing on me too, but let me... Okay, okay, I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I Sell to, We really need to bring back something that is going to be like a good identity to our team for a third jersey. What color would you go with primarily? Okay, they have okay, so they have the white with the blue shoulders and like orange trim. Yeah, and like the, the nice, nicer one is the bl- the white one, yes. Maybe the, uh, like the blue. Oh, did they, did they bring back the robot oil drop? Nope. No, that no. would be what I would do. Okay, it was so bad, but it is good again. It'd be so bad, it's good again. Yeah, how, David, I'd you buy wait. that. How about you wait? How about the entire logo being orange? What? And the, and the jersey being dark blue. Oh, no! What? Why? Why would you do that? And what's up with the arms? Does that line up perfectly with your elbow pads? Every player wears it at a different height. What is that shit? Are you serious? What do the numbers look like? Are they... Don't. Don't. Are they just orange? Are they all orange? I don't Pull know. it up. I'm no, nervous. wait. Have they worn it? Yeah, they're just no! orange. No! <laughs> Why? What are you doing? What are you looking at? What are you doing? The, the Oilers, Oilers jerseys. Be- what is that? When, when someone posted that, I thought it was one of those like... Oh, That's crap. They didn't I look thought like it was one of those like website. fan sites. Yeah. It's like, here's a jersey mock-up. What do you think? And 20 I'm like, bucks. Get it. I was going to write I'm like, that's horrendous. And, Did then, they? and they're like, this is real. And I was Kay. like, oh. Who Kay. owns... Who, who, Daryl Cates? Was he was he on a trip to China recently? And he and some guy's like, "Hey, back of my van, twenty bucks." While we're on the and Edmonton like, hey, thing, hey, I don't hate it. While we're on the Edmonton thing, so Connor McDavid's having a fantastic season. He's Connor McDavid. No, it's ketchup cam stuff. Oh, no, no, leave it no, out. no, this is different. He he's apparently so good that he can make up rules during a game now. What? I was watching the Winnipeg. Okay, you guys tell me if you've heard this rule before because I've never heard it in my life. Okay. And the announcer seemed like he was trying to figure out how to explain it because anyways overtime jets oilers oilers shoot the puck down the ice onto connor hellebuck from over center hellebuck freezes it whistle face off mcdavid's like you, they show mcdavid he's mouthing they can't change and i'm like what is he talking about yeah Jet, jets can't change the announcer's like uh, oh well because the puck was shot from over center in overtime Sorry. And, and and hellebuck froze the puck the jets can't change what? Since when is that a rule? What? 
Okay. But he covered the puck, so it'd be like I'm a, assuming a stoppage of play. I'm, yeah. assu- I'm assuming it's to prevent teams from like getting a break to switch players. But since when is that a rule? No, but like, why so would you go and cover it and then to to allow you to get a break? Like, so literally, not a face-off's in your so, zone. Yeah. So literally, McDavid pretty much made up a rule, and the ref was like, "Oh yeah, no, you guys can't change." S- seems legit. <laughs> Really? It happened. I'm like, when? Since I'm like, in my head, I'm like, when is that a rule? Oh, Greg, are we gonna talk Apparently about it's that a rule. at all? What? Else, I'll bring it up real quick. Capping Oh, you can bring him up. No, no, that's something I didn't know that was a rule either. Like, I knew you couldn't do it. Throw your stick at Yeah! Him. What is that? What is that? I was you, watching a game. You didn't and know that was my a rule? My dad and I were watching. We're like, wait, okay, that's for sure a penalty. You and then toss up the X, and I'm like, penalty shot? Yeah. What? Dude, and of can't course, throw your stick at someone. Yeah, but like I've seen plays where there's a broken stick on the ice, and a guy like basically shoots the stick at someone. It's a penalty, that's a penalty shot. shot. Yeah, it's, uh, that, that's wow. a rule. For and of a course, long Petrus got okay. Anyway, sorry. Okay. Wow, but we're learning so, so many Edmonton, things. I know. The right? Edmonton Oilers, their Twitter post for this jersey was the the hashtag Oilers at NHL and Adidas Hockey present our new Addy Zero ultimate jer- uh, alternate jersey for the 1920 season. Fusing sport and culture, this special edition jersey features a modern and futuristic futuristic design elements that create a clean, sleek, and bold new look. They forgot the word. It's dog shit. What's the hashtag? There's no hashtag. Oopsies. That's <laughs> the hashtag. Yikes. I always love when they, I always love when they use bold as, as a substitute for horrendously awful, but, but we're taking the risk. They're like, it's not bad. It's bold. It's going to work out great. It's bold. You know what I was... I okay. was listening to a podcast earlier today, and they were saying, oh, you know what? Like, nowadays, obviously, like, you can't be, like, mean. Still you can't, you can't, like, na- name call people at work or whatever. What do you call... What do you call... A, like, okay, what would be Babcock? How he's kind of hard on his players? What What's the, the word that Stern? you... Old school. old school. Old school is a new word for that coach is an asshole. Oh. And I'm like, totally is! Yeah. Totally is! Yeah. Okay. Quick question Go. before I move on. No, here. I will not buy you guys those Oilers jerseys. No, no. I'll buy okay. myself one. <laughs> when you look at that Edmonton Oilers jersey, Wait. does it look like anything like this jersey? Let me just pull it up here. One okay. second. Let it load. Guys, if Oscar Clefbaum gets 80 points this year, it won't I'll happen. buy one of those alternate jerseys. Quote me. Does, does it look name on similar it? to that? Oh, Greg showing me a Chicago Bears uh, jersey. The orange just isn't as bold. That's the only difference. It does, actually, now that you mentioned it. Does. It does. Yeah. And those numbers look white. Is Daryl Case? Yeah, a those numbers are white, not orange. That's the difference. Maybe, you know, Chicago understands color scheme, whereas Edmonton's just like, put blue and orange. It's the only colors we use. Just, if we don't have a bold enough color, just make it bolder. Because we need to be bold To be fair, maybe it's the secret ingredient, because they're off to a pretty nice start this yeah, well, like, Why would they do that? Because it's pretty bad. Well, you like, have so I, many options. Like literally, you have so many nicer options. You know what? Even and you have Connor McDavid, so everyone's gonna go buy a Connor McDavid jersey. Well, they probably are with that. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, I know. That's maybe why. Maybe that's it. Maybe literally just like three, three head honchos in like the design crew for Edmonton. They're like, we got McDavid. We could literally sell him anything. Is that right, Bill? And then Bill's like, hey, look what I bought in China two weeks ago. And they're like, that's it. Let's do it. I bet you a $1,000 dinner that we can't sell 100 McDavid jerseys in an hour. They put it live. It's at like 10 grand, 10,000 copies. <laughs> like, oh, this damn was, it, people will buy it no matter again. what. It's yeah. just easy. No, people will buy it no matter what. So. Yeah. Uh, okay. Fun stuff. Devils, 2-4-2 two, and two to start the season. 2-4-2? Two, and two. Yeah. Hey, Jack, I think they were 0-4-2 oh, at Yeah, they were 0-4-2 oh, at one point. Jack Hughes, only one goal. I saw his first assist. goal. I watched it. I mean, to be fair, goals. their first game of the season, they were up 4 nothing on the Jets <laughs> with about a minute to go in the second period. They lost. <laughs> they lost that game. Uh, the Jets won. Yeah. Dan, is your theory and prophecy coming true yet again? What's that? That P.K. Subban is super not great for dressing rooms. Well, you tell me. He's been on two teams <laughs> in three years. You tell me. <laughs> two teams in three years. And both those other teams that do... How he was on a perennial you? Stanley Cup contender, and they literally traded him for draft picks. Yeah, there wasn't. They traded him for cash space so they could sign. And shaking his head, but yes, I'm just Jack saying, Nicholson. I should tell you right there. If you're a good teammate, you don't get traded for cap space. No. Just saying. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. What if Wheeler gets traded? For cap- like, oh, what are you doing? Then maybe he's, he's great- not a good teammate. No, no, no I'm just bugging. He's great. So realistically, going into the season, you'd say it'd be Capo Caco versus Jack Hughes for the uh, Calder. Calder. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Would you be surprised if I told you that? 
Victor Olofsson of the Buffalo Sabres would be leading the rookies. Not only do I not know who that is, he's, I don't know how to spell that either. He's, he's lighting it up, isn't he? Yeah, he's uh, nine, nine points in ten games. Right-handed, oh, yeah, right winger. Is he from where? Like like college? Where is he from? I don't know. Let me look him up. I'm I'm assuming if I had to say anything. Okay, uh, I'm gonna say the Sim Liga. Wait, is he Swedish? He's Swedish. He's it's Swedish. Olofsson. Yeah, yeah. His name's Victor. He played in the AHL last year. Before that, he played in the SHL. What? For is... Moto and then Fulunda. Hmm. Right. He was a seventh round pick. Well, big boy? What is he? Tiny? Speech? He's 5'11", 181. And he's playing on top line with Eichel and... I don't know. I honestly and haven't watched the, the Buffalo Sabres game because I couldn't care less. Yet, yet, they, could not yet they are him. leading the NHL. The, the NHL. What do you mean, eight, leading the NHL? They're, in what? They, they are 8-1-1. One, one. In standings. Shut up! No. In the standings. Dead serious. We're not even going to catch up Cam yet, and we're already blowing your mind. I can't wait to tell these, him some of the records some of these teams. These oiler jerseys. Fun. And now this? <laughs> they are eight. I don't think I could take catch up Cam. I'll be too excited. They are 8-1-1. <laughs> one, one. Guys, don't but look then, over here. I am fully torqued. All okay. Right? <laughs> so you got Victor Olofsson. Then you got the defenseman from Colorado, Kale McCarr. Oh, he's nasty. I already know that. Then I don't you know have, his stats. Then you have my favorite thing that's come out of the Toronto Maple Leafs so far this year. Suitman, Ilya Mikheyev. At 7 points in 11 games. Nice. Why? Yeah. So in his first post-game interview with the Toronto Maple Leafs, uh, so how's the transition from Russia to Canada? He's like, it's fine so far. I just don't know why Canadians don't like soup that much. So what is he now? He just joined Twitter today. What is his handle? Suitman. Suitman. McKayev? Whatever his uh, number is. Uh, I can't remember 87? what it is. 87? No, he's not 87. Is he 87? No, he's 67. 67. Is he 67? No way. There's no way they'd allow him to be 60. He's 60. I'm going to go 66. You guys want to hear a fun stat? No, he can't be 66. Is he? Well, he can. A douche. Guys hear oh, he's 65. 65. 65. Do you guys want to hear a fun stat that's kind of a dig at both myself and Greg that I just realized? What? Well, Jets have allowed the second most goals in the NHL at 36. Guess who's allowed the most? Toronto, 39. Yeah, well, that's what happens when you play Michael Hutchinson against Montreal, hey, how Washington, and Boston. He was a perennial. Those are his three games. He was a perennial Why? backup wonder. Why? Because we have to secure the two points on the first half of a back-to-back. Hold on, though. Because I'm Mike Babcock. Who are the and first I'm half? Alt- Who are the first half teams? <clears throat> Let me. Columbus is one of them. Columbus. I watched that. Was one of them. Yeah. Uh, fuck. Detroit. Maybe I can't remember. One second. What? Okay. I. I didn't watch the game, but play why the was there a penalty the shot in overtime? Back. No, can't do it. You know what I mean? Like, as in play your good goalie on the second half. Why was there a penalty okay. shot in overtime? Uh, because Martyr hooked him. Uh, See, here's the... Okay. I, had a, I was watching the game the other night, and I got mad. I got mad only because... Only because I could... Wa- like, I saw it in real time. I watched Martyr hook him, and then the ref's hand goes up. I might have been the only fucking person in Canada and the United States that knew that the penalty shot was because of the hook and not because of the hand in the crease. Because the idiots on Sportsnet were like, oh, that's a hand in the crease. It was very obvious not. You watch the replay, the ref's hand goes up as soon as Marner hooks him. It's a small detail, but for me, if I'm calling the game, I would like the calls from the announcers to be correct. Just Was it Sportsnet? It was Sportsnet. There you go. Dan, I feel like you don't like Sportsnet. And you know what? Nothing's changed since you started that box. You've been on the I Hate Sportsnet crew Have you for a tried while. watching a game on Sportsnet? It's awful. The odd time I've watched highlights. I'm right. sorry, but when, this, when the same announcer calls Blake Wheeler Mark Wheeler for three years straight, he got fired, by the way. It took him three years, but he got fired. Oh, so all you have to do is wait three years for the sh- more guys to go. It's horrendous. All right. So bad. Uh, there are three back to back teams where the Columbus Blue Jackets twice. Like the, and the Minnesota Wild. It that's when you're playing Freddie Anderson? Versus Canadians on Saturday night. Guaranteed points. Now. Yeah, but it's Freddie Anderson. Montreal, Toronto, first Saturday night of the year. Freddie doesn't play. Michael Hutchinson does. Then you have a Wednesday night hockey, prime time, against Washington. You play Michael Hutchinson. Then you have Boston on the second half of a back-to-back, and you play Michael fucking Hutchinson. Now, what I'm not blaming yesterday on Hutchinson. Hutch. Nothing, but your He's backup still... should not be playing against the better teams. I, this this is just logic that 
baffles me. Yeah, would that why not, is he trying to galaxy brain shit? Would that he doesn't not, need to. Would that not make yeah? Like would it not make more sense? Did you play, know what to he play did? The backup in the in the quote unquote weaker games. Okay, quick question: When you're in overtime, what do you what do you what should you do in overtime? Your start start of overtime five five minutes on the board three on three. Who are you putting out your first line? Best players. Best players. What does Mike Babcock do? Don't. I'm gonna play the matchups. Why? Do you not play your best players? The point of three on three is to be fun. Stop trying to galaxy brain shit. What did he do? It did he doesn't put, work. Did he put Alex Kerfoot. No, he first, put first... Freddie Goche for sure was out there. Oh, first, I don't remember who he put out there. First, but he was trying to Freddie Goche going trying... up against Ovi. Hey, hey, okay, do, you, do you know what's nice? You have Mitch Marner, pretty fucking good. Decent. Austin Matthews, one of the best five on five scorers in the history of the NHL. That's why he's not playing. He's very confused when it's three on three. <laughs> it's three on three. It doesn't work. It doesn't <laughs> Math work. Math checks out. Sorry, it guys. It doesn't work. Next argument, bud. Morgan Riley, arguably one of the best offensive defensemen in the league. I'm not going to talk about his defensive ability because it's not that great. Offensive defense. But your goal in overtime is to score. score. You don't yeah. need to play defense. You have those three guys, and you're like, mm, we're going to play the matchups against Pierre Luc Dubois, Cam Atkinson, and uh, Seth Jones. That's what we're going to do. What we're going to play the matchup. I can't remember who he put out there, but I feel I for Jason whatever reason Spencer. for whatever reason I feel it was like Alex Kerfoot, Ilya Mikheyev, and like Tyson Berry, which isn't bad. But that's Why are you a line. That's a forward. That, no, yeah. Yeah. Mikheyev's a forward. Wait, oh, is he a Kerfoot's forward? A forward. Oh, I thought he was a D. And you're telling me that didn't work? <laughs> <laughs> and then like and then the superstars. How quickly did it not work? Fifteen seconds, no. roughly. Well, once they change, then Mike Babcock's like, "See, this is gonna work. They're gonna go out against second unit." And don't get me wrong, like they were still like okay to watch. Like they were still good when they were out there. Like they should have scored. But it just makes no sense why you don't put your best players out there to start overtime. Why? Yeah, and this is this is the problem I have with Babcock. I just I feel that the players don't want to play for him. And on top of that, I think he overthinks things that are extremely simple. You don't need to play matchups in overtime. You don't need to sit players for 90 games and then wonder, well, why is this thing not understand how to play hockey? Why are you so shocked to play 10 games, Justin Hall? Because you haven't played him. You've let him rot for two years. Fuck. He's a nightmare. So how long Get rid of him. Babcock going to last the year? I they keep winning. Or like they're not, they but they're not. They're a 500 they're team. They're not. They're like They've they're been like a 500, 500 team. team since January. 2019 has been statistically one of the worst years they've had, like record-wise, sorry, record-wise, yeah, yeah, yeah. since they got the big three. And I'm sorry, I don't think it's the big three. You know what? And when you continue and insult a player like William Elander, who we never really talked about his contract dispute, he just refuses to give the guy praise. Refuses to do it. He's been one of their best players all year. Well, you know... When you finally find confidence, that's what happens. Oof. Oof. That's what he said? That's rough. Paraphrase. Oh. It's not exactly oh. it, but it's like... It's like... finally I'm, find it? Here's, here's a compliment and backhand. Like, he just... Uh, you won't so be lonely angry. for your entire life. Ouch. Thanks. He's, but he's got Stanley Cups, so he's a credible coach. No. Anyone... Shut hey, up, Dan. Hey, your shoe could hey, have Dan, punched Dan, the wings Dan, in the quick question late 90s. Shut quick up. Quick question for you, Dan. What did you do 10 years ago? What were you doing 10 years ago? Uh, I graduated from high school and worked at Sobeys and played a lot of video games. What did you do 10 years ago? I graduated from high school. I also worked at Sobeys and I also played a lot of video games. <laughs> Greg, what did you do? I graduated high school and did work at Sobeys. <laughs> ah, damn. But also played a lot of video yeah. games. Ah, My point is, <laughs> things change in 10 years. Not really. Mike Babcock I own has Sobeys. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> I play video games in my Sobeys. <laughs> Mike Babcock has not. He has stayed the same. No. Nothing about him has changed. That's that's my point. That's all I'm getting at. I want Babcock out too. Don't worry yeah. about it. It's happening Kay. because Sheldon. Sheldon. Keith. Oh, everybody wants Chief Keith. Yeah, I know. I Come know. on. Okay. Uh, Oilers mm -hmm. and Bruins top the NHL right now at power play percentages of 35%. Actually, that's better than one in three. The Edmonton power... That's a quick math they did in my head. I'm like, that's one every three times. Yeah. That's a math idea. Actually, the uh, the Oilers played the Jets on Sunday, and their power play at the time was at 47%. <laughs> Against the Jets' penalty kill, that was at 62%. <laughs> and the Jets shut them out. The Jets didn't allow power They did play. it! No. Yeah! But like nice. 47%. Decent. 
<laughs> 47, and that's through like 10 games. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. deadly. But I watched the Bruins Leafs game yesterday. Everybody, or at least TSN, the big focus has been Toronto Maple Leafs power play. I'm not that scared of it because I know what they're going to do. They are so. People are like, oh, the new look power play. It looks the fucking same as last year. If you don't win the draw and keep pressure in the zone, they don't enter the zone. They have no ability to transition the puck from their end of the ice back in because they stand five guys on the blue line and the other team's just like, well, we're just going to stand four guys here. You're not going to dump a chase because none of you guys know how to dump a chase because Mike Babcock's head is fucking. I, I don't even know. Like, it's so right up thick. There. It's oh. so thick because he just doesn't think of new strategies. So, unless they actually gain zone pressure, they're not dangerous. But watching Boston's power play, every time Pasternak or Marshan touch the puck, you're like, oh, my, they're going to do something insane. And I'm going to say it right now. David Pasternak, better player than Mitch Martin. He's pretty Hands down. <laughs> watching him play yesterday and what he does, is he worth more than 6.6? 100%. But... I don't think you would have had David Pasternak this summer being like, well, I think I'm, I'm worth uh, as much as Austin Matthews. I think you would have had David Pasternak saying, I would have taken eight. Like, he's even saying it's 6.6. 6. He's like, that makes me a pretty rich man in Czech Republic or wherever he's from. Like, yeah, he's, he's just jacked to play hockey and make money playing hockey. And he's probably one of the most underrated players. We talk about him a lot, but I don't think we realize just how good he is. That line, that Marchand, Bergeron, Pasternak line – isn't just the best in hockey. I think it is one of the best we've seen in a decade, if not longer. There is no three players that play better together. Like, David Pashnik swung a 180 pass through three player skates under a stick right on Brad Marchand's stick. What, like, basically one touched it in. Like, had it on a stick for half a second to corral it and shot. Well, they played together for so long that now they know, like, they just have a feeling they know the guy's there and they just, they make it work. It's ridiculous. And... They don't have a lot of size, but they have a lot of snarl, and they not back down from anything. Now, granted, do they do stupid things? For sure. But I would take them on my team any day of the week, any three of them. Well, and as what you just mentioned, like they have a lot of snarl, they never quit. It's yeah. like with with a line like that, even if they're not the biggest, you're immediately, they're already in your head because they're like, oh, if I have the puck, they're going to come skate at me. So they're already bigger than they, they seem. And so then they're already in your head, they're winning the mental space, and then they get the puck and they're winning the physical game as well. Yeah. And when you mentioned the best line in the last 10 years, the, a line that came in my head, the, the only lines that popped in my head were individual players, and I'm like, oh, it wasn't even a line, it was just a player was good. Like Crosby, Dupuis, Kunitz. It was Crosby the entire time. When yeah. Kunitz had the puck, you're not scared of him. When Dupuis, Dupuis was just jacked to be there. You know, he was once an Atlanta Thrasher. Did you know that? I didn't score that. I have goal for the Thrashers. What? Yeah. And he was a he was one of only for quite a while. He scored a goal. So, go. It's time to move on to catch up camp. All right. Okay. We're yeah. running out of time here. Yep. Uh, got a lot to still go through. Okay. Okay. So Cameron, I don't. You remember Lou Cheech for James Neal trade, right? <laughs> I sure do. So, if you had to predict right now, so the Edmonton Oilers are seven two and one mm -hmm. in their first ten games. Yeah. Okay. If you were to predict how many goals James Neal would have, granted he had seven goals last year, but if, through ten games, how many goals does the real deal James Neal have? Nine games. There are ten games. How there many are goals? ten games. Ten games. How many goals? He's playing with big boy. Big boy and, and, and power play. And power play. I'll do six. Nine goals. <laughs> He's more goals he had, now than he, he had, did last he year. Had a four goal he had night. a four-goal game. He had six against two. He had six goals. Doesn't matter. Doesn't games. matter. He hit four goals. He yeah. had six goals in his first four games. I mean, yeah. to be fair, yeah, guys, games, yeah. I did foresee the future by saying he was definitely going to be a bastard. So, I the also year. did take him on my fantasy team. I'm like, if he plays like McDavid, it doesn't matter. Anyone, okay. So, now I'm going to frame this. If you were, this isn't necessarily a catch up part, but this is something I heard Calgary Media saying. Yeah. yeah. If you were to rate that trade and you see James Neal through three games has six goals. What would be the stat to take to be positive about Milan Lucic with through three games in, Cal in Calgary? He doesn't have a penalty. Ten fights. No, no. He to, to make it, like, take the piss out of their own water there, yeah. I would say Lucic doesn't have a penalty in three games to make it feel better. Yeah? 
That I, well, that's the only justifiable thing I can does, think does of. So I'm gonna I'm gonna He's tell you even one up. for one He's straight up the muscle. Yeah. straight up even if James Neal only had ten points this year that's still a better deal. It's James so, Neal over Lucic. Lucic yeah. make bonehead plays all the time. And he's only got two assists through 11 games right now. Two is incredible. Okay. So good for him. So, no, I'm not even paraph- This is word for word. Milan Lucic is exactly what Calgary needs. In okay. what aspect? He they gets, needed someone to wear 27? He gets penalty minutes. They do not have a guy last year that got them enough penalty minutes. He came exactly that as advertised. He gets penalty minutes. Gets. What do you gets mean? Penalty. Gets. Like he, he takes he, penalties? He takes penalties. Gets penalties. That is what Who's the Calvary coach? Media. Who is the coach there? I don't no, even know no, the Calgary no, coach is. Who this, are you? It's not the coach. This Bill is Peters. what the media is saying to justify it. Yeah, what? James Neal might be scoring goals, but Milan Lucic is getting us penalty minutes. They're putting you down. What are you talking about? Dan? He's you know, you know how you, hate, you know what you no. don't like Winnipeg media. He's put, I think I don't like Calgary media. He's putting, they don't understand. He's putting them down is. to lift them up. He's in 20, what aspect? I don't know. He's okay. <laughs> Are you making Michael Frolik work his ass off for a paycheck? Oh my God! Okay, who's on the penalty kill? So I'm gonna see if I can find it for you, but he's at 26 right now. 26 penalty minutes. 26 in 10 in, games. In 11 games. In a. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Calgary is also God. Calgary is also a very mediocre five five and one right now. Twenty six. That's thirteen penalties unless he fought. Yeah, he did fight. That and they're a five hundred hockey team for a team that won the Western Conference. Did did they win the West last year? Yeah, they did. The regular season West champs. Hey, it's a banner. In they could wear a banner. <laughs> a banner in I love it so much. I love that. Set the game. I love it so much. I want to get one of those. I want to. get and get a Nashville regular season Western Conference champions. Oh. Nashville's a great franchise, but when they did that, everyone went, ooh. Eey. Eey. That's a misstep, boys. Yep. Yikes. I'm going to pay for that one. That's a oof. That's a oof. Sorry, I'm going to apologize if this is the wrong clip, because I don't have headphones here to listen if it's the right clip, so. Okay. Sportsnet, by the way, guys. Of course it is. That is the justification of the dumbest trade. Like, that's... That is... I was saying earlier, that's Galaxy Brain in this trade. What is, is Galaxy just, Brain? I've heard this a few times. So, but. it's essentially like... Have you seen the meme? It's like... I'll find you a Galaxy Brain. Oh, meme. where it's like regular. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then the it's bottom like just, it's Galaxy. Exactly. It's, it's just like... like you're it's over, so incredible, but it's really just you're dumb. Just, you're overthinking it to like just... Epic proportions. Like, you're trying to make and rationalize something so minuscule to make it be such a big thing. But it's not. I don't even know why they even, like, who came up with the idea to trade James Neal. Because, like, all you had to do was switch up the lines a bit. Like, they barely gave him a chance last year, mind you, to be fair, because their top line was gelling so well with Elias Lindholm, Monaghan, Goudreau. You're not going to mess that up. But give him a chance with, like, Sam Bennett. Like, he was riding fourth-line pine, like, all the year last year. So what are you going to do? Like, yeah. uh, it's just ridiculous. Um, yeah, I don't know. how. He's, that's the dumbest thing ever. Like, mm. okay, so he's, he's got nine goals? Nine goals. Nine goals, But in that game, games. that was just after Edmonton played Calgary where James Neal scored four goals against Calgary. Oh. Was it Calgary? They scored four or goals. Or he might have scored four what goals that night. Regardless. in a game? Yeah. And then to justify, you say, oh, my God, he gets penalty minutes. <laughs> what? Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. Hello, okay. Sportsnet. Got to keep moving. Got to keep moving. Yeah, absolutely. Okay? Lay it on me. NHL veteran of 586 games. 500 has games. 161 career goals. Mm-hmm. Just signed a contract with SC Byrne. Legit? Yeah. Andrew, Andrew McDonald, McDonald. McDonald. does not McDonald. have 161 goals. Points. It's got to be points. <laughs> it's not goals. goals. There's no way. I wrote goals. Hey, Dan, no Dan, way. I wanted to see if that would slip by because that's a lot of G's, all right? And Sign the fact him that up. If that's the case, 161 goals in 560 games as a defenseman. Oh, my God. That's one of the greatest defensemen of all. I think that is the top score okay, defenseman of all time. I apologize. That's 161 points. points. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, no. How many goals? Dan, you guess. That's your guess. 
Okay, 161. You said 13. Damn, that's a good guess. I'm going to be a dick. I'm going to one you. 14. Yeah, Price is right, me. 28. Oh, okay. hey, pretty good. Yeah, I did bad. Price is right. His highest, highest point season was the last year of our podcast. Six <laughs> goals. 15 points for, tw- or 15 assists for 21 points. Yeah, 106. He was making 750K. Not bad. But I'm right. pretty sure he's making five. Well, now he's no longer an NHL veteran in 500 plus games. He's 161 goal scorer, Andrew McDonald. <laughs> he's veteran hockey player. <laughs> veteran hockey player with 160 goals. Okay. Oh, my goodness. So, that's that. <laughs> that's great. Attack. Okay. Feel the My burn. next question for you. Go. If, you were, if I were to ask, who has the lowest attendance right now in the NHL? Attendance? Yeah. Florida? No, actually. What are their two teams? There's two teams below Florida, let me tell you. One of them is in Canada, I believe. Oh, I, oh, Ottawa. Yeah, but who would the other team be? Who the other was team? it the Islanders? Because they had yes. the game in Uniondale, and there was fucking nobody <laughs> there. <laughs> Even wait, 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 wait. They're back in you. They're back at they're, the Coliseum. Yeah, Nassau they're playing, Coliseum. They're playing, they're playing both. a lot of games. They're playing both. They're playing at both places. What are they trying to be? Tampa Bay Race? I think. We're gonna play half our season in Montreal, and. The season ticket holders in Tampa are like, I'm excuse me, what? <laughs> I the think, price didn't change. And I'm pre- okay, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so the Jets third game of the year, I think it was the Islanders' like second game. It might have been their first home game. I don't even know. Neither but, did they. But apparently. like a week before the game, they're like, oh, it's gonna be at, uh, it's gonna be on the island, and people are, and they're like, if you're thinking, oh yeah, let's get fans. There was nobody <laughs> there. Like literally, there were more people at our beer league game when we won the championship than there were at that game. Really? Like, even bad. on Sportsnet, they were like. There's, wow, there's nobody here. Mom? <laughs> <laughs> it was bad. Like, really bad. Oh, oh. Okay, wait, right. so in attendance, it's Islanders at the worst? Islanders, then Ottawa, then, um, then uh, uh, Florida. Florida. Well, like, Ottawa if, tarps off sections. If so I were to tell Ottawa you. also, like, had a game with, like, 2,500 people at it. Like, 2,500? No yeah. Like, no if I okay. Was, if I was while we're on the attendance thing, if I was to tell you the Winnipeg Jets failed to sell out their first home game since they came back, would you believe me? Yeah. No. Yeah. No. No. Totally. Because it happened. Did they? Yeah. Really? Yeah. The I game against the game last week against the Coyotes, there was fourteen thousand nine hundred or eight hundred. Like they were three or four hundred tickets short of a sellout. But and, and then the next game after that, they were over fifteen, but still not sold out. What? Interesting. Hold so, on, I thought every ticket actually, this season. So the night... No, they still have... They have like about four or five hundred... Oh, yeah, because you have I'm going to find the article. So um, the night that the Jets um, had that low attendance, there were five Canadian teams playing home games. Um, the only one that was sold out was Toronto. And that's All the other ones the were below... Seats, right? A lot of it... Well, Toronto's just crazy in general. Like, I don't know... I don't know. Well, how and they people... have millions of people living there. But yeah. how the fuck do people find money for this shit? I like looked at a Toronto Maple Leaf game. It's like two hundred eighty bucks to fucking go. Like, ho- and it's like that's I'm like sorry. second deck. I'm sorry. I make an okay living. I wouldn't say it's great. I wouldn't say it's grand. Okay, I could not justify spending two hundred eighty dollars to go see a Leafs play. I, I just can't do it. I'd love to. I'd love I to. I think it's I ticket just... prices. Yeah. Okay. So last week, five Canadian teams played. Toronto sold out. Winnipeg, Calgary, Vancouver, Montreal, all did not sell out. And I think Calgary was Montreal. like... Montreal? Yeah. But I think... They're huge. They have like 19,500 yeah, people. Yeah, but they always sell out. And 19, I think... But weekday games are And tough. I think Calgary, I think they were like 2,000 below their capacity. Which is a lot. I, I honestly, I'm starting to believe, and this is my... Because of my job, I'm seeing kind of the operation side of hockey a little bit more. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to get too in depth with it, but yeah. I believe that a lot of people are starting to make sticking points at just the overall cost to go to hockey events. And I think or at events some point, in general, yeah, events too. in general, I think at some point it has to dawn on ownership that you can still make massive profit margins, but I think it comes down to fucking not paying players. 14 or 11 million dollars to play for you they, like i get you want to see rise of but eventually no one's gonna go look at baseball it's had its lowest attendance in the history of the sport why because tickets are like 40 bucks they played what is it 81 home games there's just too much it's too expensive look at look at what happened here when we had the nfl game in winnipeg tickets were 160 for upper deck to watch an NFL preseason game. 
No one's going to go see that. At some point, people have to start realizing, the ownerships have to start realizing that ticket prices are just too expensive. It used to be an easy night out and it used to be affordable for families. It's to the point now where it's just not. Nope. And, it's, right? and it's only going to get worse. Look no further than your favorite NFL team. They got it right. Where yeah. they capped the prices of tickets and they lowered the prices of the food menu of to entice people. He's talking about the court. Atlanta Falcons. Oh, sorry. oh really? Uh, yeah. yeah. So like, hey, we all know about those Atlanta all-you-can-eat hot dog seats. But it's like, bucks. <laughs> yeah. dude, hot, like, even at the Super Bowl, they didn't even, like, beers were still like eight bucks at the fucking Super Bowl. That's good. That's cheap. And, and, but it's, it's just, it's, too, it's this, like, hey, this is what we are. You want to come here? That's fine. It's, we're not but it's the, the idea money. of you're selling an experience is an experience like I get it I'd be able to watch my Toronto Maple Police play in their arena I can't wrap my head around of paying for any experience one night okay well there are a few but like one night of $283 the last three hours but of I, a hockey game I could watch on my couch I think you could probably swallow doing it once as opposed to having to do it 41 times exactly but that, that's that's my point that I'm getting at here is I just yeah. think right now the NHL, I think all major sports except maybe the NFL because they play such a limited schedule, I think we're reaching a crisis of which people don't want to go. It's yeah. too expensive. And like the NBA gets propped up by eight teams. The NHL is going to continue to get propped up by about eight to ten teams. But at some point the levy is going to break. These Top end teams can't compete or can't continue to support the the bottom teams. But then those th- it's always the cycle effect. It's like the circle. But I think what we need to look at and say is, okay, why is it the Carolina is starting to sell more tickets? Why is it that you know Florida is doing okay? It's because they're not selling a luxury experience. They're selling a working people's experience. Come with your family, enjoy the game, have popcorn, have pop. You make more money on concessions than you ever will on tickets. You'll make more money on trying to push merchandise than you ever will on tickets. So stop trying to gouge people at the tickets. Allow them to spend their disposable income on the concessions and on by by honestly lowering the concessions. Because I look at it as if I'm if I'm a patron and I'm saying, okay, I can go to the game. Let's say beers are six bucks. Because they are Gold Eyes games, and I think Gold Eyes is probably the best experience bang for buck that you can have. Yeah, it's great. Six bucks for Gold Eyes. Or Gold Eyes is our Gold local Eyes, baseball. Yeah, Gold Eyes is what? 15, 20 bucks for a ticket? Eight. Okay, or, or eight moves. bucks. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Yeah. So you're paying six Pro bucks. How you do six it? bucks for one beer, or I'm paying 10 bucks for the Jets game. So if I bring 25 bucks to a Gold Eyes game, I'm more inclined to spend 25 bucks than I am spending $20 for two beers, because I could have four beers for six bucks, or for 24 bucks. Boom. I just, like, I'm more inclined to spend that 25 bucks because I'm getting more for my dollar. Well, even just... You and that's just think, the way I'm thinking. Yeah, absolutely. I just had this conversation earlier. Like, earlier this or last week. Have you ever gotten a fully loaded Jet Dog combo? It's that, like $19. Oh, nope. it isn't. I did it my last game of the season last year. Like, with all the toppings. All the toppings, chip, drink. How much is it? Dan would know. With chip? Oh, God, I haven't had one of those... Loaded everything. I used to remember that then this would be going back at least four seasons. Prices have not changed on Jet Dog since day one. Because I know that you used to be able to get a Jets dog and if you wanted all the all the special toppings, it was like thirteen bucks or something. Which considering what you got, not half bad. Yeah, well then maybe they have up the prices. I That's what? not for drinking chips, that's just for the Jets. Okay. How much? For the full combo? Yeah. Twenty eight fifty. You're fucking me. No. I do it once a year. What the fuck? Sorry, uh, what? 30. For a goddamn hot dog? That's what everyone's saying. A hot dog? Yeah. Hot dog with <laughs> fake fucking beef? What the? Hey, f- <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm not kidding, Bro- dude. Brogy bits. What do you get? Okay, uh, okay, beef fully loaded and nacho cheese, okay. right? Yeah, and then you get the un- fried onions for free, right? We Ooh, got- <laughs> Ooh. Fried onions for free, let me tell you, eh? Hey, oh, you let me toss in this bullshit, <laughs> this bullshit vegetable that literally has only taste when you fucking grill it with something. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah, how dare fuck you. you. Like, how oh, dare you talk about raw onions like that? <laughs> oh, fuck, man. Yeah, is that crazy? Oh, it's a bag of chips. It's not even a big bag of chips. It's a little uh, fucking... Uh, hey, it's just the 12 of the minutes. You know what the worst part is? It's and not then it's even, a fucking... It's not the commemorative cup. cup. You give me the cup, you bastards. The cup... Actually, I'm, I'm sorry, Dan. I put it right at my side. But it's literally filled. 
filled with ice. You get like a little bit of soft drink. In Do you know how much a fucking soft drink is? The cost on that shit's like ten cents. Are you fucking me? It's like you know, five dollars for the bag. They, they, they actually are. They literally are. I guarantee you, right the, cost, the cost on that entire jet dog is like three fifty. Like, oh, that, that's generous. Fucking Greg. idiot. Cam Holmes gonna spend <laughs> fucking twenty eight fifty. Hey, you know what? To be uh, fair, it's delicious. I get it. Once, gotta, that's why I do it once a year. Because I like, gotta put a lean on my thing. fucking house. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> well, no. Imagine buying that for your entire family. You have four like, kids. That's 120 bucks. Are you kidding? Four you, fucking you have four dogs. kids. You're guiding one jet dog. Quarter, 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 quarter. <laughs> hey, they do cut it in half. They do cut it in half. If you ask They're not them. animals. Yeah. And it's only seven bucks a kid. That's not bad. That's not a meal, though. Yeah. They, get they get what? They got a quarter of a foot long hot dog. Ah. They got a quarter. They got three inches of a fucking hot dog, <laughs> eight, four <laughs> chips each, and a sip of drink for seven dollars. You can go to fucking McDonald's, get a large fry, a McDouble, and a large drink for like eight bucks. Like uh, for thirty-eight fifty, you can own a franchise. Then you can own your own fryer. <laughs> I'm not saying I do it. No. Oh. Oh my god. That's why I go to games and yeah, never, maybe, maybe never your buy anything. Fucked. Maybe you're right, Greg. I think you're on to something. <laughs> Do you know something. what I buy at the hockey game? A Tim Hortons coffee, and they still upcharge you on it. How, how much? much? How much is it? AK, Tell me how much it is. It's not horrendous, but I think if you go Is it $5? No. They only... <laughs> for so, 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 <laughs> so Tim Hortons now, they only serve large drinks. That's all you can get. At the, at the Jets game. Yes, at yeah. the Jets games. It's two fifty for a large coffee or a large drink. Okay, that's not awful. It's not bad, but it's like I think it's like two twenty five if you go to an actual Tim Hortons. Here, so here's it's the still up Imagine charging. the cost on that cup of coffee. Oh, that's great. It's thanks. like thirty what, maybe thirty one cents for the <laughs> tops, <laughs> dude. And they got new lids. That suck. <laughs> they have steak sandwiches at the at Jet Games now. Shut up. Like Sixteen fifty for a sandwich. From no fries. Tim's? No, at the Jets games. Oh <laughs> yes. It's sixteen oh, fifty for a steak sandwich you with wanna, no fries. You want to check this? Um, at the, at the grill or whatever, like Aviator's Grill, you can get, like, you can get, like, the fancy burgers. I got a, ch- I got, I was hungry one day, and I didn't want the jet dog. I wasn't really paying attention. The guy was like, oh, do you want bacon doing this? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll get all of it. It was thirty seven twenty five. I got, fr- I turned my fries into poutine. Oh, and, Cam, and literally Cam, my fries were the size of my fist. Cam, These are goddamn fist. Cam, stand up. Why? Stand up. No, Why? just like, stand, and now bend over. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bend yeah, over, yeah. please. <laughs> Because that's what they did. They did. They oh, they just... got me so good, dude. Fuck so man. good. Uh, yeah, when he said he was like 37.25, and I was like, what? You, my friend, were hustled. Like, And yeah. this is what I don't get, is the the average person that goes to a game are is the three of us, working class people, that they're using it as a, a rare night out. Yeah, you know what? I'm cool with spending 60 bucks on a rare night out. But give me some bang for my fucking dollar, man. Like, I get it. I get it. You gotta run a franchise. I get it. You gotta pay Patrick Liney 6.75 mil. You gotta pay uh, Kyle Connor 7.25. You gotta pay Mark Shaw. You gotta you gotta pay all these guys. Maybe you don't need to pay a fucking athlete seven million dollars to play a fucking sport. How much? I'm pretty sure Winnipeg concession prices aren't even bad compared to some. What? Are, what is? We're the, one of the highest. Yeah, we're, gotta be one we're. of the highest because they're one of the smallest markets. So how oh, are they gonna make money? But concession but like, wise, yeah, because not everybody in the stands has a fucking jersey, and I know we all know the cost on those fucking NHL jerseys. They're not ain't a lot. that high. Yeah. So that profit margin they're making on that is pretty fucking good. What? What and is the bounce back that they make? Like besides concession, like say if they were to slash concession prices, I know after. After uh, all the kickback and whatnot, they make just over a million dollars a game on ticket sales. Just a game. So that covers $42 million of your salary cap right there. That's half your cap. So My fucking so God. So what's the bounce back they get off, like, merchandise and stuff? Oh, I guess. It's got to okay. be good because there's always people walking around bags. Like no, but buying, I'm, like, I'm like, just saying, like, like, like because stuff. Where, if they're going to cut concession prices but keep everything else. Or, like, hypothetically in our world, like... How much money are they making that they don't want to justify making concession less? Or is but, it just but them here's being the thing. greedy? Here's the thing. Is yeah. I, I really honestly think when you take into account all the operating costs, because you have to, like, yeah, great, they're making $42 million. That probably doesn't even cover their flight, their travel, their hotel, like all that stuff, right? Yeah. For the year. Or even the staff working the game. Yeah. So yeah. It, it, is, it is a big expense. But what I'm saying is, is if you're paying players less money, 
Like, yeah, it'd be great to have a hundred dollar, hundred million dollar salary cap, but who's going to be the ones that are going to end up paying for it? Yeah, part of it's going to be new TV deals, but that's not going to pay for everything. It's going to be fucking. It was the downfall of the first Jets because there wasn't a salary cap. But now that if the salary cap keeps going up, what's going to happen to the small market teams? It's going to be interesting. Yeah. So, and I know this was a huge tangent from where I wanted to go, but uh, yeah. Either way, uh, let's wrap up and go into hot takes for hot cakes. Deal. Okay. Think of some. Well, I've got three for you guys. Okay. Perfect. First one. Oh, wait, we're going to go over again. The warm one is like I agree, cold one I disagree. Fridge, warm. Yeah. Fridge is. If bad. it's a hot take, yeah. it's controversial. Got it. Go if go. If it's go, a go. cold take, then it's yeah. Probably okay. Gonna got happen. it. Got it. Okay. Leon Draisaitl should have gone first overall in his draft year. Who, who, who was, was first? Yeah. I don't remember. But this is after oh. Leon Draisaitl had 50 goals last year. Yeah. Thanks for filling me in on that, guys. Quietest 50 goals I've ever heard in my life. I don't know if they said goals. that. I'm like, he got 50 last year. Yeah, right. I thought he got like 40. Isn't that yeah. insane? But oh, still 40. It's a lot of goddamn goals. Well, he got 50. Okay, I know. Number one, Aaron Eckblad. Number two, Sam Reinhart. What year was this? This is 14. Sam Reinhart was on the Kootenai set. Yeah, Kootenai went off that year. They didn't yeah. win, but they were good. They were good. Should Not he have been Vegas. the? Oh, I don't know though because two years ago we were saying he had the worst contract in the NHL yes, after he signed we that big most deal. Most certainly did. And he plays the Connor McDavid. Sometimes. But the question was, he now, does he go, if you redo first the draft... First overall? Is one. he better than what we thought he was, being drafted at number three? Is there should any, he have gone number there, one? Was there anyone drafted there any sleep, after him? Yeah, what are the sleeper guys? There's always like, is Braden Point in this one? Because I might change my opinion. Pasternak? Ooh. Yeah, I have my one. I have my one. It's Pasternak. Yeah. It's not even close. Yeah. No, I answer your question. No. If you wouldn't name Pasternak, I would put Drysaddle one. I'd, say, I'd take Pasternak I'd say over Pasternak Drysaddle too, though, for sure. Yeah. Okay, Pasternak last night had 300 points in his career. 329 games played, 301 points. 329 games, 301. 301. He's leading the league in goals. He's got 10 goals. Yeah, uh, Leon Drysaddle 361, 328, 361 games played, oh, 328 points. They're really points. comparable. They are very comparable. But I Drysaddle's the center though. He Pasternak's is the a wing. Well, no, no, I stick. Teams. I'm going. I'll go stick. Drysaddle also has 16 points in 10 games so far this season. Playing with McDavid, come on. I don't care. At some point, you got to put the match. Actually, yeah, no, you know no yeah, he scored 50 McDavid? goals. Milan He's... fucking Lucic couldn't play with him. But you know what Milan Lucic can do? Fucking get them minutes. Get those pins, baby. Okay. Um, I to answer your question, no, I don't think. So that is a. Oh, uh, fridge, fridge, cold, cold take. Cold cold take. Cold I, I would say cold take. I, I, yeah. I'd say. Well. I don't know if it's a cold take. I'd say he so. It's a hot take saying he should have gone first overall. Yeah, I'd say he yeah. probably should have gone second. That is a hot. Okay, take. that's fair. That's it's fair. He should have gone higher than he went. Let's put it that way. Only because of the Pasternak. Yeah. That if you didn't yeah. say Pasternak, completely, I agree. Yeah. Hot. Yeah. Okay. So I saw this yesterday. This is not my personal hot take. Okay. Oh, I have a but, question after you have to remind me in okay. regards to Ottawa. But sorry, go ahead. Okay. Should or. Could you foresee, is it a hot take to believe Jamie Brett, Ben would request a trade out of Dallas to go to Montreal? Why Montreal? This is the hot take that I saw yesterday was, Montreal, for top destination for Jamie Ben because the Stars are looking to shop him. I don't believe it. Well, they've been off to a it, pretty horrendous start you know for what? a team that should have been a cup contender. They were, what, 1-7-1? Oh, they're 3-7. Okay. Three, three, is it a hot take to believe Jamie Ben could get traded in general? I guess we'll be no, 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 I believe that. No, I believe it. I got a better question for you. Is it, is it a hot take to say that Jamie Ben is overrated? Because he had, did not have a good season last year. Yeah, and last year, but he's pretty, been pretty consistent. He's three seven and one right now. He's one and uh, they're loss. three seven one. No wait, Rocker. Sorry, right. I shouldn't say overrated. Has his time passed? No. I don't think he's on the right team. I think he's on the down, but I think he could have resurgence. That team literally added Corey Perry and Joe Pavelski. And they are worse than they were last year. But you're also adding in Corey Perry past his prime. Joe Pavelski, I would argue, clear to pass his prime. Still a I pretty don't... darn good... Pavelski's a pretty darn good player, though. Okay. He's 35, 34. Still, though. I mean, they were a perennial cup contender, and right now they're far from it. I'm not saying it's all on him, but I'm looking at his stats, and yeah, it's been... Like, last year wasn't good for him, for sure. Um, he had like 40, like 40 he's, points. He's five game. points in 11 games, which is not what I'd want out of my top line left winger. Um, I think a change of scenery would be beneficial for him. Nice, but he can't. He can't. 
play with his brother anymore because his brother doesn't play much. But that's right. why he probably he's got a lot of insider trading from Jordy, who played there for a couple years. Sure. And oh, wait, so that top line would be what? It'd be Domi. You like Duran would go the other way, hundred percent. Oh, like, if I'm Dallas, be a, oh yeah, trade right. Because right. honestly, you 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 give up Duran, you you say your two untouchables are Cole Caulfield and uh, Nick Suzuki. Those are the two off the tables, right away. Not Kokanyemi or anyone like that. No, I think honestly, I could see Kokanyemi and Juan uh, Juan going for just ben. for Jam- Jamie Ben. I like that. I uh, hot. I agree. Hot, hot, hot. I like that. That's nice. I'd be okay with that. I want like a. But when's if, the last big trade you, that we've if had? If you think that could happen, then it's a cold take. Yeah, it's a oh, cold then take lukewarm, if you... lukewarm. I'm I, totally I, fine. Honestly, with that. I, if especially if Dallas drops a few more games, I would not be surprised if they moved somebody significant to shake it up. It's not. I, it's I'd not say, Sagan. No one's taking that goddamn. I'd contract. say Sagan or Ben, because you're not going to trade the new guys you just got. Yeah, you're not. Well, and they're old. You're not going to get a good return out of them. Like here's here's the problem, right? So you got Tyler Sagan, 27, Ben 30, Pavelski 35, Radulov 33, Cogliano's 32, Corey Perry's 34. There's there and there. They have team. the problem that they've had, and they have not been able to get any youth into their off it like another top six that is good they haven't been drafting properly yeah so that's drafting, but it's right? just it, it's amazing they gave who up on last... Nutrushkin, who Where's is he? now in colorado oh, yeah. it's just amazing that they have that much quote-unquote oh, no. offensive talent even though if it's older and they they can't score their best their best def- their, their best pick in recent memory has been miro heiskanen who's uh who's that, was a, yeah, that was, was a good pick that's a good pick their d is actually somewhat okay um Essa Lindell, which was a gross overpayment, but he's an okay defenseman. Uh, John Klimberg, obviously. Uh, Miro Heiskanen. Andre Sikara on a pretty cheap deal. Jamie Alexiak, who's serviceable. And then Taylor Fedden. Fedden. Don't they have Goldoski? No, he went to Arizona. He's in Arizona. Polak? But they're, yeah, Polak's on IR, though. Oh, okay. And they also have 33-year-old Blake Como, who's on IR. So, like, they're just an old uh, team in general. They there. are. Um... Moving on from that, yeah. third hot take. Is it a hot take to now say Alex Barkov is an underrated player? And I don't mean in the sense of he's a hot take underrated player. I'm I'm thinking now because everyone calls him an underrated player that he's no longer an underrated player because people are rating him properly now. So is it a hot take to say he's still an underrated player? Yes, yes, yeah. because I don't think he is. And anymore. it's Sasha I've, Barkov. I think after last year, Alexander. No, it's Sasha. Sasha. I know it's Sasha. I know. Sasha. I know. He's nasty. I think after last year, I think people... He kind of went through the Blake Wheeler cycle, right? Where for a few years, everyone was saying, like, he gets but no... But did he have kids? And he gets no kids? credit. And then all of a sudden, the Jets are a good team, and now Blake Wheeler's considered, yeah. you know, like, top, top-tier top star player, right? Absolutely, and yeah. So I, I think that's what happened to Barkov. Yeah, well... I think, it, honestly, it's the market that those guys play for. Play. Didn't he have, like, 96 points or something like that yeah, last year? I don't remember. He had 90-some-odd. He probably has a hundred. Oh, friend of the show, Matt. Uh, he has offered his services by saying he wants, you know, PTI. Oh yeah, he told uh, me this too. PTI, and he said he's like, I'm listening to the podcast and I'm screaming right now because you guys are saying wrong facts. He's like, I want to be the guy at the end of the podcast. It just says all the things we did wrong. All the things we did wrong. So he'd sit fourth chair, be silent for the entire time, and just Make look notes. up all of the notes. all the follow all the or just correct us right then and there. Yeah. We're, we're wrong with so confidence. What's so uh, exactly? We still have to make that T-shirt. Uh, what was uh, your Ottawa question for Dan? My Ottawa question? No, to both of you. Okay. I had heard a rumor from an old man, my dad, who said that he read somewhere that Robert Kraft, owner of the Patriots, yeah. were interested in buying the Sens. Is I that have, real or is I that have, just hearsay? I have hearsay? not heard that. I'm not saying it's not. I, I think I he spends a lot of time on Facebook, so it's kind of been. I know one that of you. I, I think there pages. was. I think it was just a, a fake thing that came up. I know that um, Eugene Melnick was named the worst professional. Uh, sports owner in all like of all sports, and that's over some like. Hold on, did we ever talk the about the Borecki thing? The Mark skinny Borowiecki? jean interview. Yeah, was that last was that year? Last... Did we never get a talk? I, I don't really know. Have... No, last I think year we were... was wild, guys. That was a we wild. We picked the wrong I'm year. To really quit. upset. I know. I mean, we had yeah. It was today. it was a falsely tied. He was falsely tied to it. Ah, oh, dang. Yeah, because that would have been really. I just want why because so you can have not a... have a dickhead owner. 
Like, I want him to yeah, just you'd rather have a, a little bit. You'd rather have a felon as an owner? Guy who's... Who gets for... handies and parking yeah, lots? Exactly. Sure, I don't who's care. That? Robert oh. Kraft. <laughs> he paid her. I don't know what's wrong with yeah. that. I see nothing wrong with this. It's fine. It's illegal. It's a, illegal? Prostitution yeah. is, is illegal. Right. Yeah. Yes, it is. Do you have something to... No, <laughs> no I, I just write. I, my brain yeah. comes to Shut up, guys. Do you have a uh, hot take there, Dan? Uh, or no? Okay, next time we do the podcast... The only hot takes I have would be, like, bold predictions, so I don't know if those count. No. Okay, uh, my ne- okay, well, then my next bold prediction is going to be that by next podcast, Lucic is going to have triple the amount of penalty minutes as James Neal has points. <laughs> I have a hot take. Is it a hot take to still say... Or no, sorry. Would it be a hot take to say that the Jets did not lose the Jacob Truba trade? Given I don't think they lost. Given no, okay. Neil no, 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 Neil no. Pionk, he's got seven points in eleven games. He's on pace for a fifty-some odd point season. I think it, okay. They, so, so they got Neil Pionk. They got a first-round pick, which is Billy Hainola, who looks like he's going to turn into a pretty so good sport. defenseman. Yep. And they're saving about four million dollars in cap space. So did is is it a hot take to say that they because when that trade happened, a lot of people were like, "That is horrendous." I think a lot of people didn't realize what Neil Pionk was, and I'm not saying he's anything like Jacob Truba, but what he is is he's a serviceable four to six defenseman who's gonna could put up thirty, could put up forty points. Right now he's on pace for fifty. Great. Um, I'd say he's probably a number. Th- I'd say he's a, he's a number three defenseman. I think that's just in terms on on a decent team. Either I think way, he'd be three. He's still three or four. He's serviceable. He, oh, for sure. He's a serviceable defenseman. I think it's a win. I think the way. It's the thing is is yeah it's great to talk about Villanova and the success he's having early in his career and it's fantastic to see the problem I have with that is what happens you know players develop differently I, I still think the focus with him should be development Jets aren't winning this year there's no point wasting him and forcing him to play remember this is still a team that has um, what's his name the uh, uh, who's the Guy they drafted a few years ago. I can't think of his name. Oh, Logan Stanley. No, not him. The forward. The um, forward. He's a forward. Left winger. Who's the fucking left winger they drafted oh, two years ago? Oh, uh, uh, Veselinen. Veselinen. There yeah. we go. They yeah, still have him. NHL. Matt just had an aneurysm. <laughs> I know. Did you hear that in the, the future? The entire Matt's, time. Matt's <laughs> like vein in his neck. is just... Yeah, but hey, no yeah, but he knows a defenseman. Veselinen is not a defenseman. We can no, train I, him to I know. It's no I know, but all I'm saying is... The the clear path is let's they still have these young guys. There's no need to rush them into oh, no, development and into the NHL. So let's focus on that. Sammy Niku. So you're gonna have Niku. You're gonna have Anola. You're gonna have Vasilainen. Like they still have good players that can come up in the NHL and be serviceable in the next two to three years. Mm-hmm. Not a big deal. Um, so I do think it, I think it was a good trade, and I think they saved that cap yeah. space, which is I, gonna help them in the long term. They got something. I think down the road it'll be it'll work, it'll work out. Yeah, and I have no ill will towards Jacob Truba. I wish him no, the best in, in not New not York, but uh, that team is very poopy, as we'll see in the Little Freddy watch. <laughs> Real <They're> poopy. <laughs> Number five, worst team in the NHL, New Jersey Devils. Fourth worst team in the NHL, Minnesota Wild. Third worst team, Detroit Red Wings. Fourth worst team, New York Rangers. Mm, second worst team. Though. Second worst team. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Fourth. Uh, yeah. Fourth worst from fifth worst. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then last place team, as you all would have predicted, the Ottawa Senators. They're last? They're last. 1-6-1. and one. It was who, great to have a young Canadian. Guess who their team. one win was against? Winnipeg? No. No, guess. No, take a guess. Oh, fuck you guys. It's Philly, isn't it? No, no it's no, a good take team. A, take another guess. A, a Edmonton? Divisional team. Pretty much That's everyone's standing up at the beginning of the year. Yeah. Tampa? Yeah. They beat Tampa. <laughs> Wait, after, hold after, on. Who wasn't playing in the Tampa game? Everyone. Did they sit everyone? They had point playing. They had... Oh, then that's game, game set match. Are you kidding me? They had Bra- Braden Point is nasty. That was... I think that was two nights after they just put the boots to Toronto and beat them 7-3. Why is it that almost every year... Like, well, everyone has, like, a boots put to them. It almost seems like Toronto, <laughs> in big matchups, always, at least twice, two to four times a year, they get the boots. My favorite boots, though, was to a team. Like, do you remember when Steve Dangle lost his goddamn mind? Um, when Carolina. Nashville? No, oh. Carolina. With um, the defenseman, they, they tra- like he, they traded him, and then he scored James oh. Mentor. No, maybe not. Gardner? 
No, no, no. no. This is was it when Con- like this is years ago? Yeah. Oh fuck, I don't remember, man. That's oh, crazy. he had like an aneurysm. Like it was crazy. Man, you should see his latest video for today, like for yesterday's game. I, I gotta go. I, with, I gotta. I, I gotta don't know. subscribe again. I don't I have, know. I unsubscribe because I just stopped watching hockey. I don't know if he's okay. He's great. Like, I don't know if he's okay. Like okay. I'm seriously worried about. Okay, his wait. Mental. So who's who are these players again? Lafreddy watch. It is so Alexis, Alexis Lef- Lafreniere, Cole Perfetti. Then you got uh, the Swedish guys are Holtz and Lucas Raymond. There's also an American in there, I believe. That's fine. But really, Cole Perfetti, Alexis Lafreniere. Those are the ones I care about. Okay. And who? Wait, who's second again? Second uh, worst. Oh, that would be the uh, New York Rangers. Yeah. Are they tanking just to get another American guy? They might. Cole Perfetti? Or yeah. is he Canadian? No, Cole Perfetti's Canadian. He's very good Canadian, too. Gosh darn it. All right. Yeah. Hey, guess who leads NHL in goal differential? Goal differential? In yeah. negatives? No, in positives. Buffalo. <laughs> Tampa. Probably. Buffalo at plus 14. They're the best team in the league. Are they Tampa this year? Yeah, they might be. They w- Actually, I don't want that. We don't all forget around. they won 10 games in a row last year. This is true. And then they only won 15 games hey, the whole rest of the season. Cam, Philadelphia is the perfect, like, the perfect mediocre team. 3-3-1, three, three and one, 21 goals for, 21 goals against. I'm talking about three goals a game for, three goals a game against. That's all you need. Perfect. That's all you need. Perfect. Okay? 3-1 yeah. and one at home? Or no, sorry. Yeah, 3-1 and one at home, 0-2-1 oh, and one on the road. You're fine. You're it, good. Yeah. You're good. Can't wait to see Kay. December. Got to wrap 15th, it up. I think. Now, this, some of this is going to be, uh, obviously... Uh, news to me? No, not news to you. Old news to you because okay. you wrote it. So wrote let's it. get into comments last week. Oh, shut up! <laughs> Unbelievable! I did not write this. Can we, can we just appreciate for a, f- a second that John Carlson has twenty points in eleven games? That's As a ridiculous. Defenseman. Yeah, that's. I know he had. Is he gonna break a had... hundred? Who's the last defenseman to break hundred no. points? He's well, not break. Probably... He'll break. Oh, oh, he'll break the record for no. There's no record that he'll break. I think he's gonna have 86 points this season. So Norris Trophy for sure. It's the Bobby Orr Award for most goals, and then that was Norris probably sh- my favorite thing we've ever had. What was when we renamed the trophies? Absolutely. And then the Norris is the actual best defenseman. Like last episode, we literally talked about how Bobby Orr should be top scoring D, and then Norris should be actual defenseman. So then you separate who scores goals and who's an actual defenseman. So the Milan Lucic award for most pims. It'd basically be the, like, okay, Eric Carlson and Mark Edward Vlasic, hypothetically, if they're D partners. I don't think they are, but if they were. <laughs> Carlson could win the Bobby Orr award, and Vlasic could totally win the Norris. He's nasty. He's so good. Bobby Orr had 139 points in one year. I do remember that, because he had... Yeah, he you had, were born in 1970? No, my dad's favorite player is Bobby Orr. I, it was at the year end. I think he had 86 assists or like 102 90, assists. Never mind. My oh dad. My he's telling me stories. Then Paul Coffey had 138. Then he had. Then Bobby Orr had 135. Paul Coffey 126. Like, okay. My dad. Keep he, in mind, Coffey was playing with Gretzky. Those are stacked my dad, oh, numbers. Oh fuck! Stacked you. numbers. Fuck dad, you. Dad, lead me into what you're about to say because your dad told me the same thing. My dad used to tell me a story that when he was a kid okay. and they used to do like hockey pools and like fantasy hockey. Oh yeah. If you picked Wayne Gretzky, you could only take his goals <laughs> or his assists. Yeah. You had to pick. That's how good he was. So you don't come at me with that shit saying Paul Coffey's st- stats aren't stacked. You know, Marty McSorley also scored 20-plus goals in an NHL season. You know what his nickname is? The Fist of Gretzky. Okay? Shut up. That's like Lucic, okay? That's like Lucic having 40 goals nowadays. Get real. All right? It's not having 40 goals now. Okay, here's the thing. So, Cameron, this is how how I know Nick is, or how uh, Luke is you. I was against Cam about the maple syrup debate. No, read all of them in order. No, cover it all the way. But once you said lukewarm, well, shit, I'm with Cam. Cam knows what's up. Lies. Get Lies. me. Put the anti-J in the fridge. You say anti-J. No one else says He's taking up for me. It's not me. It's not me. We have missed the entire. (laughs) He's a committed fan. No, there's a hidden message in there. Lukewarm. Uh, Yeah, it's Luke. uh, I'm telling you, it's Luke. Luke Lukewarm. You said lukewarm last week. Yeah, you you're Luke. Bitch. No, it's not me. Okay, how do I prove that it's not me? Like, he okay. has to be sitting here beside you. Oh, that he's is... gonna fly in from Halifax. I don't care. I don't care. He sent us a picture. It's on the. It's on the email. 
Yo, so Miss Sunderstone, it's Cam Music. It's clear as day. He artistically blending Akuna Matata from I, Lion King with Aruba, Jamaica. Ooh, I want to take you. He is flexing his out, outer windy, cold, dustful Winnipeg ways with the flavors of Western tropics and African savannah. Beautiful. Only you no, can describe not your me. song choice like that. This isn't me. <laughs> this is not me. Brad Kilgunis was traded. Do I like walk away and news. plug my ears and like when you upload the podcast, I can't listen to it for a week? And then, like, I don't know how you're not, I, I, this is not me. I love that. It's not me at all. Okay. Actually, I have, I did have two people reach out to me about comments to answer our questions. Okay. Friend of the show, Andrew, or my friend. Why not does he comment friend. on YouTube? Because he just texted me. He said, he said, bold prediction. Boston, Boston beats Toronto in seven in round one. Most bold. Because of this, Babcock gets fired. Babcock? Is going to get fired at the end of the season if the Leafs don't win the cup. Okay, and here we go. Matt, friend of the show. East final. Or no, East Philly, West San Jose. Cup final, Sharks and six. Major awards. He chose Hart, McKinnon. Uh, uh, Rocket, Line, Norris, Thomas Shabbat. Tough to do on a shitty team. Selkie, Crosby, Lindsay, McDavid. Not that hard to okay. pick. He didn't really cool. go off the board. No, much. he didn't. Well, he doesn't really think outside the box too I much. I mean, Philly, San Jose, Stanley Cup final is pretty wild at this yeah. point. Two people on the TSN, like their major panel, two of the seven chose Philly making it to the East final. What? <laughs> what? Carter Hart. Carter Hart. Carter Hart. He does a lot. Okay. Let's wrap it up, guys. He's got the heart. Yeah. We also had Era 12 comment. Uh, nice to see you guys back. So that was nice to see. Nice and to Luke, see you. Luke, thank you. Yeah, Luke, we give you a hard time, but. Could you just side with somebody else other than Cam? No, because now he's going to go... Sorry, pro- no, sorry. What no, protein no, powder do you use? No, because That's now he will, and then Cam heard it. So Cam can just <laughs> side with right. one of us. I'm, it's not... Never going to believe you. I'm sorry. You know what? Yeah, just for fun. Go. One of these days, I'm going to add something to the podcast. Just for... But I week. listen to the podcast after. Of course you do, because you got to comment somehow. <laughs> God damn it. It's not me. We got him to send pictures like two years ago, and he did. I know. You could have just used random. Yeah, randomizer. the person on Kijiji really hooked it up for 10 bucks. <laughs> you went on Fiverr, let's be honest. Uh, yeah, yeah, Fiverr. There you go. Yeah, yeah, Fiverr. I'll be cheap for Kijiji. Okay, guys. Well, thank you very much for listening to this week's podcast. <laughs> yeah. uh, please check us out on Twitter, Last Man in PC. Yeah. Uh, if you want to email the show, Last Man in Podcast, or Last Man in PC at gmail.com. And as always, comment on YouTube if you want us to read your comment on the next show. Yeah, see for guys, sure. See you guys in a month. In, a, in time. In time. Well, I mean, we'll see you now, or he was.